Hello everybody, it's Drew Detzner from Langlois Vital Nutrition Center here with you. Thank you for watching this video. In this video I want to talk to you about oxidation rate and really specifically slow oxidizers. So get out your hair analysis booklet, press pause on the video if you have to, and look down at the bottom of your chart. There's three options. You're either a slow oxidizer, a fast oxidizer, or a mixed oxidizer. Don't worry, I'm going to cover all three of them in videos that are coming up. But right now in this video, we're going to talk about being a slow oxidizer. We're going to go over what oxidation rate means and how we offset our oxidation rate to optimize our health. Let's get into it. First thing, your oxidation rate means your food processing rate. So when you eat something, how quickly does your body turn it from food into energy. How quickly is it from steak or broccoli into the microscopic pieces that we can actually put to work in our body? That is your oxidation rate. We want to offset our oxidation rate with our macros. All right, don't, don't lose me. That's a pen. That's not going to work. Don't lose me. Stay with me. Macros. You know what they are. Protein, fat, and carbs. Those are the three macronutrients. We call them macros. Okay? When you're a slow oxidizer, your food processing rate is a slow one. So what we're going to do is make sure that we use the right balance of protein, fat, and carbs to support your body while it's a slow oxidizer. Let's get a little bit more detail. There are some approximate ranges of these nutrients that people need. The two most important macros to really look at when you're a slow oxidizer are going to be your fat and your carbs. So we're going to save those for last. First things first, protein. For the most part, people are going to need between 80 and 100 grams of protein a day. I'm going to recommend that you break that down across three or even for meals. When you're a slow oxidizer, giving your body less work in one meal is often better than giving it a lot of work. Again, if you're a slow oxidizer, your food processing rate is slow, a really big meal is going to feel like it's just sitting in your gut and might not even feel good. So if you're doing something like 20 to 25 grams of protein per meal, and you're spreading that out, it's going to be easier on your body as a slow oxidizer to process. Fat is the slowest digesting macronutrient that there is, so we need to be careful with it. Because we know as a slow oxidizer, your food processing rate is already slow. So we don't want to push our luck there. Typically, when you're a slow oxidizer, your daily fat intake is going to be somewhere between 50 and 70 grams a day. Most slow oxidizers are on the lower end of that scale because we don't want to eat an already slow digesting macronutrient when our food processing rate is slow to begin with. And last but not least, the carbs. This is actually good news. My fast oxidizers and my mixed oxidizers in future videos won't like the carb discussion as much as you, my sweet, sweet slow oxidizers, will. When it comes to carbs, they are the fastest digesting macronutrient and thus, the most important one for a slow oxidizer to speed up that oxidation rate. Ultimately, we do want a slow oxidizer to pick up the pace and become a fast oxidizer. The way we do that is by getting the carbs, typically in a range that's anywhere between 80 and 120 grams a day. Now, that's the biggest range that I've shown you so far. And the reason is, slow oxidizers often stumble upon eating more carbohydrates because they feel better when they do it, compared to eating more fat-rich or protein-rich foods. So we're going to meet you where you're at, and we're going to help you work towards these macronutrient goals. It's not expected that overnight you kick them in. The carbohydrates, being the fastest digesting macronutrient, make it the easiest one for slow oxidizers to turn from food into fuel. 
Thank you very much for watching this video. It's from a slow oxidizers. I hope you better understand that oxidation rate means your food processing rate and that we're going to address your oxidation rate by addressing your macros. What are they? With me. Protein, fat, carbs. Good. The approximate ranges for a slow oxidizer are listed here on the board. But we want to get specific. We don't like generic info here. So, bring in your hair analysis. If you don't have your hair analysis, get a hair analysis. Come in here, ask us some questions. Let's figure out what we can do to optimize your health. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you soon.